So I thought I'd share how to make a simple Valentine's card using the basic minimum of equipment. And I start with just an A5 piece of coloured card. It's smooth on one side, it's textured on the other. And so what I do is I fold it so that the texture is on the outside. So the texture surface is going to be the surface I'm working with. And I just fold that in half so it is now an A6 size card. And I'm going to draw my design separately, stick it onto that background. So I use an 8 by 6 centimeter piece of white watercolor paper. And I give that white piece of paper a half a centimeter border all the way around. And then I choose that classic Valentine's image, a big heart. Uh, and I draw the big heart so that it fills the frame that I've made. The edges of my heart drawing touch the edges of the pencil frame that I've made. And that should be uh, a lot clearer after I've done the painting. And I'm using a watercolour marker to do the painting and I'm using one of these Winsor Newton watercolour markers and it's cadmium red colour hue I think. Um, and I'm just using that to just put in some colour in the sort of background around the heart. So at this point you can figure out that the heart is probably going to stay white and I'm going to colour the background in red. So you'll have the shape of the heart and you have a nice deep red colour in the background. So I just do a small bit to start and now I'm going to add the water. And I'm doing that using one of these synthetic brushes which I think are better for mixing watercolour markers on paper than using super nice uh, sable brushes or, or squirrel hair or whatever. Um, so it's a synthetic brush, it's a size 4 round and it's, it's probably just a little bit on the slightly big side as you can see. It's kind of difficult for me to sort of trail off some of these lines and get a nice thin kind of line. Um, so maybe I should have used a slightly smaller brush, maybe a size 2 or a size 3. But I go with a 4 and I figure I can make it work. Anyway, I'm happy with the way that it's blending. I'm happy with the, the dark, the sort of deep, deep red of the colour. So I know I can use that in the two bottom side sections here as well. So when I'm filling this in with the marker, I go around the edges and I leave the middle section white. And I do that on both sides. And that's because I want the colour when I start adding the water to be darker around the, the outside edges, around the border, and then fade and gradually get lighter towards the middle. And this is one of the ways that I do that. I don't put any of the colour in the middle. So now when I start adding water to it, and this is fresh, clean water, I'm mixing the paints together, I'm getting the paint mixing with the, the water, I'm brushing it up and down uh, and all around there. And what I'm trying to do is not work the brush around the middle too much so that the middle will stay uh, a bit freer from colour than the rest of that deep red around the edge. And then I get some clean water on the brush and I just drop in a couple of blobs there hoping that that will bloom out later, making the, the centre even paler. Uh, on this side I do exactly the same kind of thing. So I drop in some clean water and I start blending it with the red, blending it up towards the corner and when I bring it back down here I then wash the brush again and get clean water straight into the centre and then start working into the bottom areas of red and going around. Again, hoping that that clean bit of water that I dropped into the middle will keep the middle bit lighter. So when it dries that's what it looks like and I'm deciding to do a design on there using a white paint pen and this is a Posca paint pen uh, and it's a sort of it's a medium nib it's, it's not too thick it's not too thin um, and I'm just doing a really simple spiral kind of pattern so I start with one spiral and then I draw like a little smaller spiral coming off that first one and, and perhaps it curls in the opposite direction. Uh, most of the time it does, sometimes it curls in the same direction. And all I'm trying to do is do big curls towards the center and then towards each of the sort of edges of, of what is basically a sort of triangle of red there. As I get in towards those edges, I'm trying to do the spiral slightly smaller, but the main thing is to just make sure that they take up the space. And the other thing that I'm trying to do is not go right up to the edge. I want the edge of that bit of red paint there to stay nice and dark red, like it's a sort of border line. So I try and make sure that when I'm doing the white spirals, I sort of just stay a little bit clear of the edge as I work around there and work upwards towards the corner uh, and just keep my design within that red triangle. You can see on the right I've got a bit of scrap paper handy and that's because as I use the white Posca pen, because it's white and it's on top of a bit of watercolour, it does get the tip kind of contaminated. The tip started to go pink rather than white. So I just kept on periodically rubbing off the tip on that bit of scrap paper on the right to make sure it stayed as white as possible. So on the right hand side I do pretty much the same kind of thing. Um, it's probably not going to mirror exactly what's on the left side, but it is pretty much similar. 
And once I've got the design done and it's dried, I need to stick it onto the pink card that you saw me preparing earlier. So I just use some PVA glue here, and this is just some Pritt Clear PVA glue. And I apply this with a brush. And that's because when I made some Christmas cards recently, I applied it straight from the nozzle of the glue um, tube, and there was too much on there, and it went all sort of wobbly and cockled the paper. So I use a brush this time so I can get a nice thin layer of PVA glue on the back of the design, and then I try and stick it down so I've got roughly the same amount of space between the design and the edge of the card on those top three sides, on that left, the top, and the right hand side. And then just stick a clean piece of paper over the top of it and press it down to make sure it's really stuck down. I put a big sketch book down on top, something nice and heavy. I'm getting near the end now and the card needs a, a caption, it needs something written on the front. So I just cut a small sliver of paper, it's just a bit thicker than one centimetre and it's um, six centimetres across and I just take the pen uh, and I just write the word Valentine dot 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 on the front. I thought of putting down be mine Valentine and all this kind of stuff and just thought no I'm keeping it as simple as possible with a simple typeface uh, and just writing in big block capitals. If I make some more I might write something different on those and I might do it slightly differently again using the Posca paint pen on top of a red background but for now just keeping it simple and once it's written and it's dried all I need to do is pick that up and stick that down underneath the sort of design, the image. And I try and make sure that I stick it down again with clear PVA glue and it's closer to the image. I'm not trying to put it dead center between the image and the bottom. I want it to be closer to the image so there's less gap between the design and the, the, the caption that I'm putting on than there is at the bottom. And that's pretty much it. Um, once that's done and I press that down and made sure that that's stuck down in the right place, you have basically created yourself a simple Valentine's card using just uh, some colored card, some watercolor paper, and just two markers, a watercolor marker and a white Posca pen. No need for any stencils or stamps, just nice and simple. Well, there you go. I hope that was useful to you. Um, if it was, please subscribe, like, um, leave a comment for me below. And also below you'll find a whole bunch of links that I will put to some of the previous videos that I've done. Some like that red rose and some like this uh, Batman drawing. And if you want to see the Christmas card design that I did this year, then also let me know about that in the comments below.